Now, what we have to figure out as a community together, right? As a community together, this is what we want to figure out. What happens when a bank fails where we had our debt tool at, right? What would be our next step, okay? And no matter which way I'm looking at it, it's probably going to it's going to hurt temporarily, but we're going to set up some parameters in place. Okay? So the first question we want to answer as a community, what happens when my bank fails? Right? So first thing that comes to my mind, if I'm doing velocity banking, let's say you had a debt tool at First Republic Bank because they're an example. Now, I, I don't think they're fully out of business. I, I think they still have locations and whatnot. I don't know if they're offering PLOX at the moment. I'm pretty sure they're not, right? Because of what's going on with them. So let's say you had a PLOC at First Republic Bank and then they froze it, okay? Now, if we go back in time prior to First Republic Bank having all these issues, what we could do, and for everybody watching here that is already doing velocity banking, let's say you're already doing velocity banking, you already have your debt tool and you're, you're rocking and rolling, maybe what we could do is build a secondary relationship. That's that's the first thing I'm thinking of. So build a second relationship with another bank. That's that's the first thing that comes to mind. Second thing, this is to add some safety measurements for velocity banking cuz again, velocity banking has risk, right? What are those risks? Well, we're going over one of them here and I've mentioned a bunch of them in my previous videos in the past way back going all the way back to 2018 2019 i always talk about the risk right kind of helping you all the way through and that's why i have my rules right because these rules protect people from hurting themselves any further right it's how we mitigate loss right and protect ourselves so the other thing that i'm thinking of that we could do as velocity banking practitioners is have anywhere between three and six months of expenses in a separate account say maybe at another bank right so in a separate account cool three to six months worth of expenses in another account emergency fund a sinking fund this is going to provide safety in the event that you make a chunk towards debt you increase cash flow and then out of nowhere your HELOC gets frozen so now you don't have that revolving access and then you're all your income is in the HELOC that just got frozen on you. So now you're like, how do I pay my bills? So having three to six months worth of expenses can give us that cushion, right? Another thing is would be having a credit card on standby, right? One of my favorite cards that I have on standby is Bank of America. Okay, this is where the big banks are very very beneficial bank of america as long as i've had this card i've had this card since i want to say since like 2016 27 is one of my first cards so i've had this card for nearly a decade it's the bank of america red cashback rewards card so just look for the red one every year right i run a couple bills on the card to just keep it active but every year they always offer me 0% balance transfers, always. I mean, every quarter, they're hitting me up. I get mail every quarter. Hey Denzel, move your debt over here. Hey Denzel, do a balance transfer. Hey Denzel, hey Denzel, hey Denzel, da da da, right? So 0% balance transfer, right? So that means that means you already have the credit card. You already apply for it. It's an open line of credit, right? Credit card. and you don't really use it right you would just want to swipe it maybe once a year twice a year it's just off to the side and you want to have a, a high limit on this card so the goal would be to have a credit card on the side and also have it be a high limit and the way to maintain that high limit is simply by asking for credit line increases every three to six months as you're doing velocity banking right once you have your debt tool, we typically don't need to get other things, right? Because we're focused on debt elimination. So if you have that debt tool first, doing velocity banking, 
great. Once you get a rhythm going, you get a couple months in, you rebuild your credit again after it got ran. And then let's say you get a brand new credit card and you say, okay, this is my credit card I'm gonna have on standby. Great, every now and then you run a bill or two on there, just show some activity. Every three to six months, you can apply for a credit line increase, or you would, you would call that specific institution, that specific bank, and just ask them, how often can I apply for a credit line increase? How often can I apply for a credit line increase, right? And you're just gonna keep asking for a credit line increase. So I've had this Bank of America Red Cashback Rewards card for say almost a decade. I think my credit limit is right around 35K. And it's always at a zero balance. Right? It's for the most, I, I run it, I pay it off, right? If anything happens in my personal finances, I'm able to do a balance transfer at any given time and I have to pay a 3% fee. And I'll have, usually they give me almost about a year, things like nine months or 10 months to do a balance transfer, right? And what's nice is you don't wanna just get any credit card with any balance transfer. Reason why I like Bank of America is they give us what's called convenience checks. They always send me like three or four convenience checks. So you can write a check to your checking account. So you turn credit into cash. So now I have cash, now I have capital to cover X amount of bills for X period of time, right? Or what could happen in this situation, let's say my bank fails and I had a HELOC and I just made a chunk of say 20,000, right? Say I made a chunk of 20,000 from a HELOC and then they freeze it. So now I can't access it. There's $20,000 owed. I can't do velocity banking. I just dump my income into it. And I use that 20 to pay off another debt. So I have a cash flow increase now, which is great, but I just dumped all my income in. I just locked that money up. How am I gonna pay my bills? So with having this, the three to six month of expenses, that cash could help. And then the second backup would be having a credit card on standby. In my case, boom, have the red. And I say, all right, um, that 20,000 at my HELOC right now is at 9% and I'm not able to do velocity banking on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this 20, pay a 3% fee because it was interest I was gonna pay anyways, but now I'm just paying it up front. So 20,000 times 9% locked up is $1,800 a month. Divide that by 12 is $150 a month, right? So you're, you're gonna pay that because now you can't do velocity banking, right? So you're kind of locked up. Only thing you could do is make extra payments. But again, you dumped your income in, so now you're kind of in, in a bit of a bind. So now you have to tap into cash on hand, right, a little bit. <clears throat> so what I would do in this situation, I take my 20 grand and I'm gonna transfer it, I'm gonna write a convenience check to my checking account, 20,000 out of the card, pay the 3%, that's 600 bucks, all right? I was looking at $1,800 at 9%. Now I got it at, I just pay a 3% flat fee of six. So now I'll owe 20,000, 600 on the card and I my monthly payment is probably only going to be 1% of the balance so 20,600 times 1% so my payment's going to be around 206 as opposed to the HELOC which is at 9% locked up 20,000 times 9% is $1800 and usually they charge you 1% of the balance plus interest 1% maybe as high as 2% so let's go with 1 200 bucks plus the $150 interest. So I went from a payment of 350 on the low end to as high as 2% plus the interest to as high as 550. So I went from 350 payment upwards of $550 payment on a 9% HELOC at 20,000 to around 200 bucks on that card. And I just moved nine to zero for about nine months to buy some time. And in those nine months, I'm going to go to my second relationship with another bank and move my banking over, move my credit, move my uh, paychecks, all that stuff, move it all over and then probably apply for a HELOC there, right? To, to get it back up and running again. That would be my move. So this is what I'm thinking of. This is how I'm processing this, this new environment that we're in where we are seeing banks struggling in the overall economy. So we can't control how banks operate their finances, but we can control how we operate ours. 
And we have to understand that when we're using OPM, right? Other people's money, that's a, that's a sexy topic. It's great and all. But what happens when OPM, other people's money, is mismanaged? When they mismanage, how does that affect your access to other people's money when they mismanage? They tighten up. They increase restrictions. They make it less uh, available, right? So not that great. So it's nice to always have a good read on our finances, what we're doing, what we're planning. And it's nice to have a general, you know, understanding overview of how the marketplace is looking like. When you turn on the news, go to financial news, right? Read Business Insider, read Wall Street Journal, you know, look for financial economic news that applies to you where you can see, okay, the you know, when they show the stock channels and they say, look, all the banks are down right now and not looking too hot. Look up your bank, see how they are doing on the stock market, the, the stock itself, the assets, those different things. That's going to be very, very helpful. So put this in your notes. Those are the three things. If you want to add something to this, go ahead and comment. And if I think it's like, okay, cool, then I'll definitely add it on here. This will be something to, to really think about. But I think this is like a nice basis to have. The other thing is, maybe temporarily we just stop doing velocity banking go back to cash flow index snowball and kind of you know wait kind of see how the market's looking see what banks are doing what kind of go from there